know you guys are thinking like, hey, why? Like what person in their right mind would let their in-laws move in? I've told some people about it and they kind of laugh. You know, they're like, you're doing what? We rent from them right now. Um, but they're gonna significantly reduce our rent um, if they live here. What's good about that though is they're gonna live here and they have no money to spend. They don't have to spend any money to live here. But I really like my in-laws and they, honestly, they help us out a lot. And this is a way that we can help them out. Anyways, I will be giving you guys updates. We've already had some kind of hiccups and headaches with the process, parking issues and stuff like that. I'll get more into that later. And this is what is kind of changing in our lives right now. So I thought I'd share it with everyone. I'm trying to make a big dent. It's not fun. So, as we were cleaning the garage out, found a bunch of my dad's old stuff. It's open. I used to like polish rocks. Or like spoons. Oh man. So, we got a lot, a lot of stuff. As you can see, this garage is pretty old. If you guys are like looking in the background, Got a lot of stuff out of it, but we still have a lot left. So I've got one load in my truck. The pile's condensing down. So this garage is gonna end up being um, what they call an accessory dwelling unit. This is gonna be where my in-laws live. This is gonna be a bathroom off over in this area. A laundry room here but you come out of the kitchen and it's gonna be a laundry room here. And then on that side is the bathroom for the accessory dwelling unit. This is gonna look amazing in here when we're done with it. There's a lot of work to do. I just poured all this, that slab's new. All the anchor bolts, underground plumbing and all that stuff. I don't have video of that. Getting ready to start framing. I still gotta tear all this stucco out these overhangs back so all this is coming out there's gonna be a door about right here going into their bathroom that's gonna be their door right here into the bathroom so our laundry room in the garage and stuff is gonna move into that room there this will be their new living space with their kitchen against the wall their bedroom in this area living room area here and kind of a breakfast nook with cabinets and storage and closet. Um, window, front door, window. We're gonna upgrade that guy next week. Get a new main panel upgrade and start running electrical in here. All of our rough electrical. The tricky part for this room, if you can see, if you, let's see. See the garage floor is, re is recessed basically so I have to bring the garage floor up level with this because that's where my mud plate is I still have a lot of stuff to clean up some of these tools I still need some of this other stuff uh, cans I gotta recycle but some of this other stuff it's hard to get rid of there's gonna be can lights all in here of course the garage door is gonna come out and that that wall is gonna get framed in so that's where their entry will be and then like I said their door for their bathroom is gonna be off there so they got a pretty good bathroom that's gonna make this room feel a lot bigger and there will be a indoor laundry room in there uh, with a freezer and all that kind of stuff this is our laundry room now which is it's working but it tends to become a mess especially right now when we're we've got all this work going on Water heater's coming out. We're putting a new tankless water heater mounted into their water closet, which is the toilet room. It's just a separate little room for the toilet. Like I said, I've got to tear all this stucco out first and expose all this framing. So when I start to tie my walls in over here, and then I've got a, I've got a spot to tie in that there. This one here, one of these under this, what are called HDU2s and they're hold down anchors. Let me show you that. 
It just goes like this. I'll just show you real fast. Kind of goes on there like that. I'll double step this wall coming from here, from the existing over for this, this wall here. Doing a lot of this work on my own right now. When I don't have help, I've got to use the kids. They're going to help me move this guy. So you can see in here is our kitchen. My sewer line runs right here across this way. So for all this sewer, I had to run a four inch main and tie into mine over here. So the reason that plywood is there is because I haven't filled back filled the concrete yet. You've got your um, washer, washing machine there. That's for the sink in the bathroom, your shower, your toilet, and a vent for your toilet. Um, and then that's your main clean out there. It has to be within, within a foot of the exterior of the house. So anyways, um, I think I've got everything covered up to now. I'm gonna go in here with a grinder and score lines on the other side. Um, and then just break this stuff out in sections. I've been taking a lot of stuff to the dump. You guys, dump fees are expensive. So if you can find a way to um, you know, take the time and separate stuff as you throw it in your truck. Then when you get out to the landfills, most of the time you can go to recycling and dump it all for free. The tricky part is getting all of this, there's gonna be a trick to it. Cause I have to have all of this ready for them. You know, I have to be working in here to get this ready for them to move in. But I also need a place for all my tools and all my personal belongings that I used to have in my garage. So if I had a shed out here, an outdoor shed that I could, you know, maybe put my tools in and house some of this stuff also, that would be great. I'll let you guys know when we get this done, when we start moving this here and getting that squared away. We're in a heat wave right now here in Bakersfield and there's like 37 fires or something going on in California. So we've got smog and smoke, haze, heat, humidity, it's horrible. I personally have never upgraded a main panel. So I'm having a friend of mine do that. That's a licensed electrician. So for all the electrical that I need in this entire place, everything rewired here and all the new stuff over into that room, um, I put down $3,500 for the budget. So the electric panel upgrade is only 1400. I'm going to see if he can do the other the the remaining electrical for the twenty one hundred dollars that's remaining in the budget see if he can finish that up because that will give me the time to start on the plumbing we got an estimate to repipe this house including the um the new addition that was seven thousand dollars it was about a, a about another thousand dollars to do the sewer for that area there i did the sewer myself for about $600, I'm thinking I can get done for under a thousand. That's just material. So we're gonna be saving a lot of money with that. I've gotta get this floor floated out before I can frame anything in here. Um, to give you guys an idea of what it costs so far, the concrete, I budgeted 2,500 for uh, myself to do it. It would have been probably about five or six thousand to have a con a contract a concrete contractor do it do it we ended up spending like 21 38 and some change plumbing about 660 dollars or so and i budgeted a thousand for that we actually got an estimate for a thousand know if that's something you don't want to spend the time on the underground plumbing um then you want to spend that extra four or five hundred bucks then go ahead and do it if you're not too familiar with it a thousand is not that bad of a price the biggest problem is the eight or 7,000 to replumb the entire house. I don't have any of my own PEX tools, but with me buying the PEX tools and the material that I need, it's gonna put me at about $1,000. That is a no-no. You see how that's wired up there? What are those? That actually runs over to this light switch. We'll fix all this stuff and get it taken care of. So far, you know, we've spent a couple thousand and we've only got concrete down. Um, but that's actually a lot. We have footings and rebar and welded wire mesh, plastic and sand and anchor bolts and all kinds of stuff that goes goes in that. 
um, it's not just you know not not just a four inch slab running all the way across that we've got um, 18 by 12 inch footers and or footings that go, go perimeter footings all the way around the entire slab so there's a lot of detail that goes into that and this really this one's really not that intricate um, I've seen a lot more a lot worse this is with pumping it in if I didn't pump it in and I wheelbarrow it in I probably could have saved myself um, you know if I got like a u-cart and some buggies it was five yards of concrete so I'd have to go back and forth five times to pick up well yeah to pick up the buggies and bring them back here offload them in a wheelbarrow bring the wheelbarrow through here and then try and it's hard you know you got a perimeter footing right here how um, with a board or something to try and get across that's just a pain it's a pain you know it was like 125 dollars um, per yard of concrete on the buggies so it would have cost me you know six seven hundred bucks after taxes and stuff um and I would have had a lot more labor. It cost about $780 to have a truck come out with five yards and $210 for the pump. Then it actually helps having a pumper because it's almost like, um, you know, I, I had a, ha a helper from our youth group. And so between the pumper, he's actually really good in straightening the rebar out for me and stuff as he goes and knocking form boards. And it's almost like having a third guy with you. You know and then i'm just finishing oh and the tools i i don't own concrete tools so i rented the tools from um, bs and e rents for 130 dollars, and that was like the magnesium float the fresno and all the hand tools i needed the uh, concrete vibrator and all that stuff so pretty fair price pretty good deal um got it done in one day it was a couple hours actually like four or five hours I just... Doing two bags at a time. Mm. Ugh, it's no fun. I think they would do it this time. It's like $4.10 a bag. Hello, Dad's hand for the day. That's what he just called you. That's who you are. So, what are you doing? I'm trying to get this somewhat smooth. I know I'm not doing as good of a job as Dad does. Well, that's not why I'm documenting you. Which is where that wall ties in. And where this wall ties in. And this wall. So I've got some marks on here. I need to tear out the stucco to at least here today. I'll get the rest later. It's just kind of strenuous. Hot today. Man, but this is where we're at so far. I'm building the pile. I'll have to cut all these all this back to the center of this gable truss here. Um, cut this guy out. I've already cut this out so we can attach our framing. I've got some fasteners and hold down some straps to put in still. So there's a hold down here. Third one here. Roll these trusses in. So I have a couple things. I would highly recommend um, whoever your truss manufacturer is that they come out and do a field measure. Um, I've done it in the past before where they don't field measure and you know field verify, and they've been off. When you're putting trusses in. Let's make sure you have. Uh, more than, you know, somebody to help you. You can't really do it on your own. It's kind of tough. Okay. So, at the end of that last video, or clip where I'm in the pink shirt, um, we got some news that slowed us down quite a bit. Aww. We had a, we were planning on upgrading our main panel. Um, and after talking with PG&E, we found out that in order to upgrade to a 200 amp panel, we would have to 
run three inch conduit from their box on the sidewalk all the way back up to our house. We didn't know it at the time, but it's gonna cost us an extra $6,000. And they had to come up with their own plans and all that kind of stuff, and it was a pain in the butt. We ended up waiting five months for them to let us know that information, get all of their stuff together, come up with some plans, some pricing, and get their crew scheduled and all that kind of stuff. It took five months. It was due to COVID. Um, that slowed them down quite a bit, some people getting sick. That's where we stand. Um, and so this next clip you see is um, after we got the news that we can continue. So I started pushing forward and getting some stuff built, um, starting to frame out the garage door wall um, just to make some progress. But you can, you know, I was kind of disappointed um, that we weren't able to continue. I thought by now for sure we would be complete and my in-laws would be moved in, but that's not the case. That is not the case at all.